host here at Author in the Headlights. And today's episode, we have an amazing find. And I will put it that way because I truly believe it. I recently run into Lynn Bohart and I found out, wow, this lady has got it together. We've got to have her on the show. So welcome, Lynn. Thank you, Strider. <laughs> nice introduction. <laughs> I'm not sure I have all everything together, but I appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what. This woman would make a very dangerous person to um, have up against you because, gosh, she writes murder mysteries and yes. murder and murder and murder, and she knows how, and I bet you she knows how to keep it quiet, too. Uh, but on this <laughs> end, got, we're trying to make it noisy. <laughs> when I When I teach my classes, a lot of times I tell my class that I I create a lot of the scenes or I go to a lot um, through a lot of the scenes in my head as I'm driving. So, oh, well, you wouldn't want to be next to me on the freeway because <laughs> I'm, I'm off in beta waves. <laughs> so you do all kinds of things. Right now, you're a freelance writer. Uh, you're an author, obviously. Um, you teach classes at uh, Green River College, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, Gosh, that's a lot of things. What else do you do? Anything else or does that cover your day? <laughs> well, um, yeah, well, I, you know, it's funny because I spent 35 years as a nonprofit executive and started writing uh, probably the last 12 years or so of my career. And when I retired, I'd already published a couple of books. And when I retired, I, I thought I would just write full time. So that's why I started my freelance writing company, Little Dog Communications, uh, which keeps me very, very busy uh, because I'm writing. I focus on nonprofits because I, I lived in the nonprofit world so long, uh, but I also write for business people, speeches and things like that, frankly, for people all over the world. I do a lot of work on Fiverr. Yeah. Writing is kind of my life now for the most part, though. Well, which I is found, great. Yes. I love the more it. I'm doing, the less time I have to write, which considering yeah. that's my business, you'd think that'd be true. But yeah. actually, I learned in my very first conferences I went to that writing needs to be your business, yeah. not that you're just a writer. Yeah. Otherwise, nothing ever gets off your desk. Yeah. But you really have to make it your business, which means you have to get out there and do and meet and, yeah. and be part of and market and all those things that people go, I don't know if I want to do that. I like being a writer because I can stay by myself. Well, yeah. maybe. Well, and, and <laughs> to be honest with you, Strider, I think that's and I think it's it's a problem of of most writers is that they want to focus on what they do best and and what you what really inspires them. And marketing usually isn't it. And I ended up writing a very short marketing book for self-published authors. Now well, that I, is that is something I do. The little, little book of unconventional marketing ideas. For, uh, go ahead, tell us about this. I belong to a couple of online writers groups. When I get on, you know, networking calls and stuff with them, I often got asked, hey, how do you how do you promote your books? And I had friends who are aspiring authors asking me. So finally I thought, well, why don't I just, just sit down and write this little book because I do use unconventional marketing techniques. I have been successful in that. I've earned enough money to help put my daughter through college. I mean, obviously, I'm retired now from my full-time job selling the books and helps just supplement my income. Um, but I'm not John Grisham or Stephen King or anything, And but I never tried to be. And so this little book of unconventional marketing ideas is for those people who aren't going to be looking at, you know, constantly doing ads on Facebook or LinkedIn or I left my business. I did that in my in my career. Uh, I want to enjoy what I do, and and I want to enjoy the marketing. So I do things like the, po the poster behind me, and that's my freelance writing um, logo behind next to that. Um, so I talk about those kinds of things, just like the podcast with you, Strider. When when I saw you on, I think you reached out to me or. I, I looked at your profile because alignable, we met each other on that's right, right. And um, I think you got a hold of me. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, they are the, yes, because they alignable sends you connections saying, here's yes. a perfect connection for what you. Do you, well, think? What do you think? I get almost people like a dating service, but not it, it is. <laughs> when I saw yours, I thought, 
oh yeah, no, of course I want to meet other writers. And, and that's the kind of thing I even talk about in my book, that you've got to take the opportunities. You've got to, just as you said earlier, you've got to get out and meet people. You've got to put yourself out there a little bit because the more you can just needle your way into other people's lives and kind of, you know, let them know when I go get my nails done, I had two women sitting next to me talking about the latest books that they they read. And I went, oh, and I let them know I was a writer and I carry cards with pictures of my books and all the yes, information absolutely. in my purse. And sure enough, I handed those out. Those are the kinds of things you can't be shy about. No, Either I, you're I, I had a rule to myself, at least one card a day. Because yeah. you, have oh, to, you have to do something to get yourself to do things. One yeah. card, that's all, just one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care who it's to, just when, a card. <laughs> when I first started out, we used to go into Target, you know, or Walmart, wherever, you know, they have book sections. Mm -hmm. And I'd have my cards and I would go to wherever the mystery books were. And I'd slip cards into the mystery books. That's she one. That's leave. a new one to me. That's good. She would leave thinking, uh, you know, oh my God, we're going to get arrested or something. I've done the same thing at the library. Um, you have to find ways... Nobody knew who I was. Well, you, you did know, say uh, unconventional marketing yes, ideas. So I, that that's fits. Exactly that fits. Right. <laughs> that's exactly right. You have to take advantage of opportunities. And, and like you said, you need to find ways to network. Yeah. Now, now, you've got a pile of books and you've got a couple of different series. Let me see. Right. I like that. The Old Maids of Mercer Island Mysteries, right? You know where, you that, know where how Island is that? Is. <laughs> And then you've got Detective uh, Giorgio Salvatore. Giorgio Salvatore, yeah. His mysteries. Um, yeah. So you really like the mystery and the yeah. murder then. Yeah. And nine, yeah. something like that. Nine novels, two short story books, and two nonfiction books. So, yeah, I got carried away. I and, understand and you also have up. a new one coming I, out. I'm just finishing up the next Old Maids. This is the most recent Old Maids behind me. And then... The lead character is based very much on me. I mean, she doesn't look anything like me, but her, you know, we write what we know, right? Um, That's right. And she likes what I, I'm a, I'm a constant Pepsi drinker. She drinks Pepsi. She loves Wizard of Oz because that's my favorite movie. So the next book is called No Place for Home, No Place Like Home for a Murder. And Oh yeah. And her titles are, yeah. yeah. we've got In Keeping with Murder, A Candidate for Murder, A History of Murder. <laughs> All roads lead All roads to murder, to murder, a key to murder, you know, like the essence of murder, murder. <laughs> mass yeah. murder. I learned early on that you should use, you know, if you want people. That's right. It helps marketing, if nothing else. Word, right? it's, if you're doing SIO, it's a keyword. It is always part of the, the title. So, and the, uh, and the covers. You have grave doubts. Now that one is set it's aside. It's a standalone though. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's a standalone, and it's the first book I actually ever wrote, and um, and frankly, one of my best. It's a very eerie, uh, all of my books are paranormal. Uh, they all have dogs in them because I love dogs. Grave Doubts has a German Shepherd in it who uh, is very much the hero to a wayward dog that, that gets adopted reluctantly and then becomes a hero. So the old maids ghosts are very friendly, funny. The, the, the old maze is very different than the detective series. First of all, it's written first person. Um, it's five older women. Four of them are in a book club together and somehow they're just always falling into murder investigations. Then the detective series is set in my hometown in California of Sierra Madre. Because again, that's an area that I, you know, you write what you know. Oh, you write what you know. know. That's right. Yeah, it's based, the the detective is based on a friend of mine who actually lives up here in Wenatchee. And I, you know, so I kind of, you know, based the, the detective on him. Uh, and that's paranormal as well. Although um, some of the ghosts in that, it, it one of the books gets very, has to do with serial killer. And uh, it's the only book that I've written where, I was uncomfortable. And the other thing they like, I get a lot of compliments from older women because it's 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 a group of older, tough older women who don't back down from anybody and they're best friends. And I actually have, fingers crossed, I have a music or a film producer who is pitching them right now to 
Hollywood to see if there's any interest in something like Lifetime or mm. or congratulations, uh, yeah. Let's but hope it was, that hope it was that such goes. A long shot and they started pitching them right when the writers' strike, you know, started. So that tabled literally yeah. everything. You know, the loyalty of the friendships in Old Maids, I think, is one of the things that people love the most about them. I noticed you're like you've got a two book series. Is there, are you going to have a third book? Actually, yes, I have okay. a two book in my series. The third is already in process, and then the series is going to continue into two more series extension from this okay. one that takes okay. the story on into uh, other eras. It's got this got this well, process see, going. So, well, yeah. the point that I was going to make was that one of the things I like about writing two different types of series is I don't get bored. I can jump back and forth. True. you know I'm, I'm in the heads of the old maids or i'm in the heads of the two you know uh hardcore detectives and um and so that kind of keeps things mixed up for me the, the trouble is the old maids is the most popular of the more popular of the two series and i constantly am getting people saying when's the next one coming out when's the next one coming yeah. out and you're into other things at the moment yeah. I'm going to pause. I'm going to tell my readers this because I am working on a, a thriller suspense book. So but again, you, you do produce a lot. You you continue new stuff, new books, new stories. Now, switching from the books themselves into the process you use, how do you keep it all straight? Or do you have a method? Do you have um a book Bible that you use? How do you, how do, you do all no, of this? I was so bad, Strider. I, you know, I'm the do as I say, not as I do person. Um, I just taught a class, in fact, um, and we did a whole section on, on outlining. And then at the end I said, and I don't outline. I have kind of a general idea of where the book's going to go. And I, and I usually start writing and I should, because I have six books now in a series. And I thought I just need to stop and take the time to map all that out because I have to go back. If, if I bring right. a character back, that maybe wasn't in the last book. I've got to go back to the book that they were in to remind myself what did they look like. Absolutely, and so, that is a suggestion yeah. I would I would give to almost anyone, Anybody. including myself. Yeah. Why, that if you're going to write a series, you need to have a book bible to tell you yes. what somebody tends to wear, what they do, yeah. what the house looks like, what, all these things, are. all How of these things are. that yeah. that yeah. As an example. Um, in keeping with murder after I'd published, I was teaching one of my classes and I had the book there and, and the class was doing an exercise and I was flipping through the book thinking, oh, I wanted to get a couple of paragraphs to get, you know, use as examples. And I looked in the front of the book and then I was looking at the back of the line, kind of went, oh shit. <laughs> because <laughs> one of the secondary characters name is Doe Kavinsky. Her name is, first name is Doe, and I had named her something else in the beginning of the book. Doe, whatever. Uh, I enjoy, I've done that. I I've actually changed the name someplace and didn't even recognize it. None of my beta readers caught it. My editor didn't yeah. catch it. I didn't catch it. And one of the advantages of being self-published, though, is I could go back and change it immediately, yes. Yes. which I did. Yeah. But that's, a, that's the perfect reason why I should I'm going to listen to you, Strider, and I'm going to do it, and I'll, I'll email you when I get it done. Well, Durham and Publishing has a writer's resource. There's developed, it's still under construction at the moment, and they do have, in fact, Diane Garland, I can recommend her, because I miss everything. <laughs> Even going back through, I can't remember it all. Yeah. So yeah. she takes care of that. That's yeah. super. And also, I just got flashed that we are running out of time. And okay. That, that is horrible, but Gosh, we've been able to meet. We've been able to talk books and we're going to talk writing and the process. And it's all a mystery to me. Oh, wait, that's your field. <laughs> um, well, I'm I'm looking forward to reading your, uh, you've got beautiful covers. Your covers oh, are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous covers. Yeah, yeah and, they are. Uh, uh, they're done by Bookfly. Um, okay. And I can highly recommend, highly, highly, highly. But again, I hope there's a second flash. We're going to lose it in just a minute. Thank you again, so much, Strider. Today, this is Lynn Bohart and her books, Old Maids of Mercer Island, Detective, you know. Giorgio much, Salvatore. Giorgio yeah, Salvatore mystery um, and others. And if you're a writer, 
Then, of course, it is the little book of unconventional marketing ideas for self-published authors, and it is available. So oh, yeah, do look sorry. at that. Uh, we'll support her that way for sure. Thank you so much for being all with right, us today, Lynn. We'll talk soon. Thanks, you betcha. Uh -huh. And thank you all for being here with this episode of Author in the Headlights, sponsored by Durham and Publishing. And until next time, thanks for being with us. Sponsored by DurhamandPublishing.com.